Azure Files is Microsoft easy to use cloud file system and you can mount Azure file share on Windows, Linux and Mac operating system. But then my friends, a natural question comes here that if we already have the Microsoft Azure blobs, what exactly is the need for Azure files? And you may be able to recall from our last video that I explained that Azure blobs can host a lot of different types of files. For example, you can have videos, you can also have images, you can have JSON files, text file, pretty much every type of file extension that you can think of. In case you have not watched the last video, please make sure to watch that. I explained what is Azure storage account and what is Azure blobs. And coming back to the Azure file shares and understanding what exactly is the relevance for the same, all these questions will be answered in this video. And yes, we will also do a practical lab on Microsoft Azure. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Now let's do a practical lab on Azure portal and understand how to create Azure storage account and also understand Azure blob storage. The very first way is this left side bar here. You can see that we have multiple options. We have logic apps, we have function apps, SQL database, virtual machines and storage account. So it is this storage account option that you can use to create storage account. And then we have second option here, which is this global search here. You can also search for the storage like this. And then you will reach to this option which says storage account click on this you will land up on this page and here you have to click on this create button click on this and then you will land up on this page here which will facilitate or give you a wizard to create storage account and once again please remember storage account is just like a container or a parent folder that holds all the other type of azure storages now friends on this project section details you have to first select your subscription in case you have multiple subscription all will be listed in this drop down menu but for now i only have one subscription i will select that and then you have to choose your resource group and please remember any resource that you create on microsoft azure has to reside in one of the resource group so currently i do not have any resource group created already so i will create one so i will name it as which resource group storage and it's a very common good practice that you name your resource group such that you're able to understand what kind of resources this resource group holds so i will click ok now and now you have to give a name to this storage account so let's give a name to this one so let me give this a name i will give this a name like storage ttbb storage here it goes ttbb storage account so this is my storage account name and then i will leave the region as it is it's east us for us but then a good practice is that you should always go for the region which is closer to your audience and then we have performance i will leave it as standard for this demo purposes then we have redundancy and here you can see we have multiple options we have lrs which is locally redundant storage we have grs we have zrs and we have gzrs and for now i will select the locally redundant storage which is the cheapest one and now let's click on advance so here you can see i will leave the security options as it is i will not touch any of these for this demo purposes go ahead and now we land into the networking details here you can see that we have we have three important types of network access the first one is enable public access from all the networks and in case you select this one so all your blobs your pictures your videos everything will be available on the open internet so in case you have more stricter security rules then you can choose the other options for now i will keep this option as default and then i will move to the data protection here also i will leave all the standard options selected by default and move to the encryption part and in this section also i will leave all this selected as default but here i want to bring your attention to one very important thing here here you can see that we have enabled support for customer managed key here we have just the blob and files but in case you want to have access to all the types of storage account blobs files tables and queues then you have to select this option but for now we only have blobs and files so i will select the first option here and then move ahead to the tags so tags my friends are just like name value pairs that enables you to categorize resources and view the consolidated billing by applying same tag to the multiple resources and the resource group in case you really want to understand the tags in much more detail then you can watch this video but for now let me leave the tag option and move ahead to the review section here you see that all the details that you have filled until now will be shown in a summary format here you can see that and once you are satisfied with all the options that you have filled then you can go for and create and press the create option so let's and it's spinning out our storage account very quick so here you can see deployment is in the progress let's wait for a couple of minutes and now you can see that our deployment details are accepted so this is a very good sign 
And in case you really want to see all the progress that is undergoing, you can always come to this section. You can see this bell icon and click on this. You can see that your deployment is in progress. So all the notifications will keep coming in this section. And now our resource, our storage account is already done. So go to the resource. Let's go to the storage account. I will click this close and then we can see all the very important details related to our storage account and here you can see that we have already discussed the blob services and i told you about the access tiers for now we have hot access tier remember this is the most frequently access tier and of course the most costliest one for now let's concentrate and understand what are the details given for this storage account here you can see that we have our resource group name we also have our location our subscription subscription id and very importantly the replication option locally redundant storage okay so now you might be thinking now that we have storage account what to do next well now we have to create other storage type for example containers which is nothing but the blob storage file shares or queues or tables so let's in this section we will create containers which is nothing but blob storage so click on this option and now you have an option to create the containers let's click on this one and give your container a name i will give this a name i will say ttbb storage container so this is the name of my container and as you can see it is accepted as well we can see that with this green tick box here now let's say create so click on this one create and very quickly our storage container is created let's head on to it so here my friends you can see some of the details of your storage container here overview section is given then you can go to the diagnose and solve problems in case you have any issues and you also have access control so in case you really want to have a granular control on who can access this storage account then you can always use this access control or iam here you can see that you have check access so here all the given access will be listed you also have role assignment but the important part that i want to show you is this one so i will go to the overview section once again and here you can upload your files such as images or photos or maybe the videos or maybe just the simple text file so let me upload some of the files from my local system i will click on this upload and then i can browse for the files so here you can see that we have different kind of files we have some jpg files which are the image files we also have a video here and not to forget this text file so let's upload all of these say open now you can see all the files are getting upload you have to click on this option here say upload and here you can see the status or the progress of the upload process so all the green ticks denotes that these files are uploaded and of course the video is taking some time so let's wait for it to complete you can see all the mbs that are getting uploaded and also the total size of the video file or any other file so now all our files are uploaded we have one video file we also have some picture files and also the text file now let's understand how can you actually access these files and for that i will click on to this image file here so let's click on this image file and here my friends you can see very important details but the most important property that will enable us to access this file is this url or the endpoint so click this url and then you can open this url in a second tab enter this one and now you can see that we are presented with one error so what is this error and don't worry we will resolve this error message i deliberately left it like this so that you can understand how these things work or how the access work so here first of all let's dissect this message and it says that public access is not permitted on this storage account now you can see that we are talking about the storage account and not the image or the file in particular so this error message pertains on the storage account level so that's your first thing to debug this error message so now let's do one thing let's open the storage account in one more tab so what i will do is i will come to this window and click on this storage account in one more tab so here you can see our storage account that we just created we will click on this storage account and then we are presented with lot of properties of this storage account you can see that we have overview section we have tags we have storage browser we will understand all these probably in the upcoming videos but the property that we need to resolve this issue is this one which is the configuration so you have to click on this configuration option and then you will be presented with lot of other details but in order to remove this error for now we have to come out to this option here that says allow blob anonymous access so currently you can see this one is disabled we have to enable it and then we have to click save so now you can see that we are updating our storage account and once it is updated let's go back to that tab where we were trying to open that jpg file now let's once again click enter and now we are presented with one more error here you can see the error message says 
that the specified resource does not exist and not to worry my friends there is just a small property that we need to change so that we can access this image over the open internet so let me go back to our container so here we are in the container once again so here you can see that we have this container and we can see this property here which says change access level so you have to change this access level property click on this currently you can see that this property is being set to private which is no anonymous access and in case you want to access all the files within this container over the public internet you have to click on this and you have to select this option here which is blob anonymous read access for the blobs only and here you can see the Azure gives you a warning message it says blobs within the container can be read by anonymous request but the container data is not still available so just click ok and now you can go back to your file once again so here we are let's click on this once again to see whether we can access it or not so let me click enter once again and then you can see my friends the image is now loaded here you can see the entire image i will zoom a little bit and similarly if you want you can now access all the images in this particular container let's open another file so i will click this copy and get the url to the clipboard let me open a new tab and paste this url now and now you can see that our image is once again loaded so now my friends i hope you understood the concept of azure storage account then we created a container and then loaded some images videos and text file into that container and please remember all the files can be accessed through a endpoint and friends i want to show you one more important thing here in order to get this file or open this file you do not need to every time go to a new browser and open the file you can always come to this edit option and your file will be loaded here so that was the quick lab on azure portal and in case you also followed this lab and you also created a storage account a container and loaded some images or videos or text files or any other files in that container then you must delete this storage account and the best and the optimized way to do this is always go to the resource group and you have to delete the entire resource group so click on this resource group and now you can see that we have this delete resource group option i will click on this and here before you delete the resource group you need to give the resource group name in order to delete that you can copy it from here and then paste it here here you can see and then you can just press the delete here it goes and then it will give you a confirmation message just press the delete and all your resources under this resource group along with the resource group will be deleted and this will make sure that you are not incurring any unnecessary cost now Azure files are organized file shares for cloud and on-premises deployments and you can store files that can be accessed from different Azure virtual machines. And very importantly, keep in mind that Azure files works on SMB protocol or also known as server message block. You might get some questions in AZ900 fundamental exam. And yes, in case you are coming from the Amazon background, it is very similar to Amazon EFS. Okay, so now let's move ahead. So Azure Files allows you for the retrieval of files via server message block protocol. And you know what the beauty of Azure Files is? That you can mount the file shares on all Windows, Linux and Mac based machines. And friends, before we move ahead, I just showed you a lab on Microsoft Azure Portal on Azure Blob. So I showed you how to create Azure account. I showed you how to create Azure Blobs, upload the files in Azure Blobs and what are the common practical problems that you will face when you're dealing with Azure Blobs. And friends, similar to this practical lab on Azure Blobs, I also have a lab on Azure Files. But this time there is a little twist. I've shared the link for the practical lab in the description box. So please make sure to do the lab, you will learn a lot. The lab is directly from the Microsoft, so make the best out of it. Now let me very quickly take you through the features of Azure Files. First of all, as I just mentioned, you can mount the Azure Files on all the operating systems such as Windows, Linux and Mac operating system. Then Azure File Sync enables you to access your data from SMB, REST and even on premises. And not just that, you can also encrypt your data at rest and transit using SMB 3.0 and HTTPS protocols. And of course, lift and shift applications is one of the best features for Microsoft Azure files. And also my friends, using Azure files, you can store the configuration files in a centralized location where they can be accessed by many application instances. And not just that, Azure files provides the capability of taking shared snapshots of file shares. And now let me tell you about the storage tier for Azure files. First of all, we have premium file shares, which is also known as SSD. And this offers high performance and low latency within a single millisecond for most input output operations. 
and as it is high performance the high cost also comes with it so make sure to use the premium file share or the ssd where high performance and low latency are the top features that you are looking for and the second tier for azure files is standard file shares which is also known as hdd and as always hdd provides a reliable performance for the input output workloads which are less latency sensitive so now let me give you some use cases for the Azure files so that you know where exactly to deploy Azure files. First of all, we have lift and shift of an application and in case you're looking to migrate an application to the cloud that currently utilizes the native file system APIs for sharing the data between the application in the Azure. And the best part is that you can migrate existing servers with no downtime and not just that you can use the storage migration service and Azure file sync to make your migration just like a breeze. The second use case I have is replacement or supplement on-premises file servers on NAS devices. So in case you want to replace or supplement your on-premises file servers on NAS devices, by the way, the NAS devices means network attached storage devices and these provide scalable and distributed storage capabilities suitable for diverse file storage needs. And the third use case is containerization. So Azure file shares can be used as a persistent volume for stateful containers. Now, as you already might know that the containers deliver build once and run anywhere capabilities that enable developers to accelerate innovation. So friends, we have covered a lot of ground on Azure files in this video. So let me summarize all for you. First of all, Azure files is quite easy to use. You can easily mount the Azure file share on your computer. Now, secondly, Azure files provides shared access and Azure file supports the industry standards such as SMB and NFS protocol that can seamlessly replace your on-premises file shares. And then my friends, the best part is that Azure files is fully managed, which means that the Azure file shares can be created without the need to manage hardware or the operating system. You don't have to do the patching of the server's operating system with the critical security upgrades or replace the faulty hardware disk. And yes, my friends, in the next episode, we are going to discuss some of the very important concepts such as Azure queues, Azure tables, Azure disk, Azure Elastic SAN and Azure NetApp. So loads of super exciting Azure learning is coming up in this video series. So please do consider liking the videos and subscribing to the channel and do not forget to press that bell icon so that you are getting timely notifications of your Azure learnings. And of course, my friends, you can always extend your learning. In addition to these videos, you can also visit our blogs, the techblackboard.com slash blog. And not only that, you can also join our membership community where we provide extra learning material. And also, my friends, I've shared some best courses courses from both Udemy and Coursera on Microsoft Azure. The links are there in the description box. And that's all for today. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.